Hey everyone, today we're going to look at uh, a couple things we can do to kind of increase the uh, the realism of your Hobby King 1875mm um, B17. Um, we're, right now we're going to kind of focus on the wing. So let's say you um, you got your brand new factory fresh wing out of the box. Uh, you've added a couple details to it already. Uh, let's say you're going to uh, make it part of the uh, the 91st um, bomb groups. So you got your um, insignia over here on the wing. You got the wing tips painted red. You have around the uh, where the cowl's seal. Uh, you have those already painted silver, and you have your um, you have the uh, superchargers already painted, um, kind of a rust uh, burnt metal color. But if you notice one thing that's uh, kind of wrong here is the fact that the paint shop still looks factory fresh, and that's okay if uh, you're planning on really kind of keeping your airplane looking more like a museum piece or maybe more like a. Um, kind of one of the warbirds that kind of go on tour around air shows. But let's say you're trying to build a period correct um, B-17 and you want it to make it look like the thing has gone maybe 90 missions already. In other words, you want to make it look like this wing here, which has been uh, weathered and beat on and all sorts of stuff done to it. So right now, this video, we're going to show you exactly how you can make the factory fresh uh, olive drab paint look a little bit more weathered. And we're going to do that by a couple different things. We're going to we're going to fade the olive drab, and then we are going to add um, oil staining, um, staining around the fuel nozzles and around the panel lines, and then you can finish that up with some chipping. We won't get into chipping today, but I'll at least kind of show you some examples of how to do that. Uh, right now, this is the um, the wing I have that has already been completed. Uh, this is going to be going on my uh, B17 when it's done, and what I've done here is I've simulated a couple different things. One. Uh, the airplane that I'm working on uh, replicating had a number of um, outer, pan outer wing panel changes uh, throughout its uh, career. And so what I've done here is I've actually weathered the inner wing and the outer wing um, two different ways. On this wing here, we're actually going to just weather it with one. We're going to just simulate that this one panel had been replaced and the other wing actually is uh, still the original factory wing. So this side over here, uh, the olive drab has been faded using a combination of a tan, yellow, and then different color light grays. And the wing over here was primarily done with tans and yellows, which is to match the, uh, the weathering that's on the fuselage. The other thing I've done is I've, I picked a national insignia that is from an earlier aircraft. And then I used the Hobby King um, decals, which actually work out well for weathering because you can actually take a little bit of uh, masking tape and you can Pull, put the masking tape on and pull off very quickly and it will actually pull sections of the, um, the decal off replicating a little bit more of a, um, a weathered look. And then I added a, a silver strip on here where the, uh, the this section here and the uh, outer wing panel are bolted together. Um, kind of assuming that uh, you know the guys would have used either another piece of aluminum laying around or off another aircraft. Uh, but I did do the same on this one. I kind of left it. So I, understanding that during um, during battle and stuff like that, the aircraft would receive basically whatever spare parts they could they could find basically to keep the thing going. And so you're not going to see everything completely uniform um, from airplane to airplane, and even from uh, one side of the airplane to the other as the aircraft are repaired and uh, kept flying. A lot of times, these ground crews would work throughout the nights just scavenging what other parts they could to try to put one together. So that's kind of why you see some different things going on with this particular wing. And you may, uh, we don't know for sure whether or not the aircraft I'm building ever had this national insignia or not, but I believe it had around um, three or four outer wing uh, panel changes throughout its career, maybe even more, I'd have to double check. But anyway, I'm gonna simulate that at least one of those has already been done. And then I've also gone through and simulated um, the oil staining uh, that is on the top of the, uh, the wings. Uh, there isn't any exhaust staining, this is actually all oil. And these vents back here are actually um, cooler vents that uh, kind of extract hot air from inside the, um, the engine area and where the superchargers are and extract it out. If you notice this one here I have actually got quite a bit of uh, oil coming out of it. Um, I accidentally overly weathered the, um, the horizontal stabilizer on the one side and so to counteract that I actually created a little bit of an effect. Um, this particular engine has got more oil staining on the top and the bottom than the, the, the other one. Um, and then I also will simulate some patchwork that's been done to simulate maybe that um, the oil tank had been uh, uh, punctured and before the uh, self-sealing occurred, uh, some of the oil streamed out and just kind of made a mess coming off the, uh, the aircraft. 
Uh, we're only going to show you, uh, we're only going to demo how to do the uh, the top of the wing in today's video, but at least want to give you an idea of what the bottom of the wing looks like. Um, you can see that I have uh, quite a bit of weathering already done. Uh, right here on the end of, edge, end of the superchargers is where the exhaust would exit. And the exhaust is going to be kind of a mixture of um, brown and black on the outside. And then because of the high octane fuel, it's actually going to have a little bit of uh, white to light gray in the center. Um, so I've kind of simulated that uh, using pastels. In fact, all this weathering is done with pastels and just a little bit of um, acrylic paint uh, for some more of the heavy oil staining and oil leaks. Everything else has been uh, done with uh, blacks and browns. Uh, you're going to see quite a bit of weathering around the, uh, the, uh, the main landing gear here because of all the mud and dirt that's going to get kicked up as the aircraft is operating around the airbase in Europe. And one reason why the aircraft, these things are so weathered is they fly through all sorts of conditions. They flew through flak, they flew through other aircraft uh, dumping oil, aircraft on fire, uh, their own aircraft dumping oil and potentially on fire. So there's a lot of um, kind of, it's a really kind of a caustic environment to operate an aircraft. And so these things would get dirty relatively quickly. Uh, this particular aircraft had well over 100 missions flown on it and it's being weathered to replicate the conditions it would have been right around uh, mission number 91. So there's a little background on the weathering. Now let's actually gonna set this aside and let's get started on how to weather this particular wing. All right, so we got our wing switched around here. We're gonna roll our sleeves up. This is really kind of a, a pretty dirty job and I'll kind of go over some of the, uh, the materials that I'm gonna use to do it. Um, I forgot to bring down my uh, cans of spray paint, but that's all right, we can at least just uh, speak to that. Um, I always do all my spray painting and stuff out in the garage anyway, and that's actually where all the, um, the clear coats are that I'll be using to uh, seal this in. Because if, being pastel, if you touch it, um, all the, um, the weathering is going to come off on your hands. So you're going to want to make sure you seal the, um, the weathering as you go. We're also going to move from uh, light to dark using a variety of different pastels. Uh, one of the ones you want to start with is, uh, you can see this one's already pretty worn down, is kind of a yellowy orange. And here is my yellow. So these two colors here are going to be used to fade the olive drab. And that's how we're going to get started. We're going to start by fading the olive drab and then we're going to move into um, the darkening um, and the darkening of the panel lines next. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. And actually for the, uh, the weathering of uh, the light colors, go very heavy with it because once you clear coat it, um, it will dull down quite a bit. On the wing that's already done, uh, the outer wing panel looked almost pure white and the inside was almost a bright orange color. And as you can see, once it's been clear coated, all that's going away. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get started with fading the aircraft. Okay, we just rub the, um, rub the pastel over the top. I'm going to kind of avoid some of the, uh, the panel lines just because you get, um, you get the pastel sitting inside there. It can be difficult to get out. We actually want to darken the panel lines, not make them any brighter. So we're going to do these two panels here. And then we're going to go over and we're going to add some uh, fading on top of the um, engine nasals here. There you go. And now remember, um, for fading olive drab, uh, only the surfaces that are really highlighted by sunlight are going to be um, are going to be faded uh, using this this technique. Um, anything really on the sides is not going to be exposed to nearly as much sun. It's not going to fade as much. So I'm going to come back around here. Some additional fading, and I'll move this up. Uh, this is kind of, you know like I mentioned, it's a pretty dirty job. So make sure you have some um, newspaper down, or you're working in an area that uh, it's okay if you get this dirty. All right, so we're going to kind of go around through here. I'll do the outer wing panel later, but this at least will give you some idea on how to do it. Um, then we can also do the exhaust staining as well. Okay, a little bit around here. And these, these chalks and pastels can be found like at Hobby Lobby or really any um, art supply store. These are actually left over from, um, I had a number of art classes in, in college and these are actually leftovers from that. I don't use them for anything else anymore, so why not use them for, uh, we're making airplanes. All right, so now we're going to start working in our um, our yellow. And as I mentioned, it's okay to be a little uh, little generous with the fading on this because once it is um, clear coated over, almost all this will disappear. So you want to really layer it on thick. 
By doing multiple layers too, uh, with in between the clear coat, you can actually come back and, and add additional um, highlights and lowlights if you think you need it, because this will change as you um, as you as you apply different layers of clear coat. Okay, so there we go. Um, we have a cotton ball here. Uh, this works really good. You can use your hands too. The only problem is I don't try not to get too much oil from my hands onto the paint because I am going to be clear coating this and I want the paint to adhere. So let's just go ahead and start working uh, working the fading olive drab in. By the way, um, Hobby King did an amazing job with this um, olive drab. It's almost an exact match for the um, for the testers olive drab spray paint. So if you uh, decide you went too crazy with it and you want to undo it or you need to do any repair work, you can actually use the, um, the olive drab spray paint and um, mask off and paint sections of it accordingly. In fact, I was hoping it to be a little bit different when I painted this outer wing panel here we're using the testers olive drab. I wanted it to really highlight the, the difference in the color um, only to find out it basically was an exact match. So good to know that you can find paint relatively easily, but um, not so good if you were really trying to uh, fade the paint accordingly. If you're using an airbrush, uh, you can actually mix different colors into the um, into the olive drab paint, and then you can actually achieve different effect that way too. So you could actually um, kind of highlight um, the fading effect that way. So all right, so we just keep working this all in. Now the the olive drab that's used on the fabric on the of uh, the wings uh, for the ailerons and well on the uh, the rudder and um, the elevators actually fades differently. This actually fades to a um, kind of a lightish gray and sometimes even almost a purple color. So you're going to want to use uh, different pastels for that too. And as you can see, even though we try to avoid the uh, the panel lines, you can still see that we have some highlights uh, that have fallen inside there. So we're going to go over the dark area. Uh, you're going to use dark areas to kind of get rid of that. So we have enough, um, actually I'm just going to go ahead and do the outside here while we're talking. So, all right, we're going to fade the, um, the olive drab on the outer wing panel. Make sure you don't get anything on the, um, on the de-icing boots. Those are rubber. They will not uh, fade to an orange color. Okay. There we go. And to fade the red on the wingtips, I mean, every, every aircraft's going to be a little different depending on what squadron you're trying to make. But for my particular one, uh, I actually use a little bit of um, light gray and white to fade the, um, the red paint out here. And that's what I did there. So, okay, let's go ahead and just work this area in. I'm going to try to avoid the A, the triangle A for the 91st Bomb Group, because that would also not fade uh, this color at all. All right. So now we have that done. We're going to actually start moving into um, fading the um, around the panel lines a little bit. So I got some really, really soft black charcoal. Be careful, this stuff gets all over your hands. And all you're going to do here is you're going to start working around the, uh, the panel lines. Okay? You're going to get them probably a little bit darker than you'd want to, but that's okay because we're actually going to use um, a cotton ball and some paintbrushes to dial this back. Okay, so now you have uh, you have the, the panel lines all really darkened up, and as you can see, boy, that's really too dark. So what are we going to do about that? Well, we're going to take uh, we've got a couple different brush options here. I'm going to pick one with a pretty um, pretty stiff brush. I'm actually just going to start working around inside these panels. I really want the uh, the charcoal to get down inside there, so I'm going to start with that first. Okay. Okay, now you take a cotton ball and just kind of work those areas back in a little bit. Just kind of, you want to dull down some of those panel lines. We got it on really thick, of course, so now we want to just want to dull that down. Okay, you can also pick up one of these little sanding blocks and use your stiff uh, brush here. And what I want to do here is I actually want to try to 
Uh, just kind of darkening some of those vents that are in the back here. Kind of gives you a little additional shading and a little bit uh, simulation of um, some dirt collecting inside there. Now remember, these are not exhaust um, ports. These are actually uh, cooler ports. So they would not have any exhaust standing coming out of them. However, it isn't uncommon that you are going to get, because there is airflow passing through there, um, if there's any leaks or anything throughout the, uh, the system here, especially on this side with the gear and everything by it, plus hydraulic lines and anything like that that could be running through. You may get some fluid that's going to leak out, but unlike the movie Memphis Bell that they really kind of show these areas being uh, kind of almost looking like exhaust ports, they're, they're not. I made that mistake on a number of uh, scale models already. Okay. And if you do get any excess on there, you can always stream it, you know, the direction of the airflow. So just kind of take your hand or the, or use the uh, um, cotton balls there, or just pull it back. That's all you got to do. Looks like I got an excessive amount of uh, weathering chalk inside here. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull that out of it using the brush. Okay, uh, the other thing you can do is, I didn't do it on this one, but you can actually remove these rings from the, air, uh, the aircraft. These are actually uh, supposed to be where the fuel filler nozzles are for the tanks, but they're greatly oversized and they don't look that accurate. But unfortunately, I, I already was way too far along on that wing before I realized I should have removed those. So I'm gonna keep it consistent, keep them on there. But what we can do is simulate a little bit of um, the exhaust or the, uh, the gas spilling and stuff like that where dirt is gonna collect. I used it on this one here, and I used uh, a little bit of uh, really watered down acrylic and just kind of pulled it back. But to start with, I'm going to add a little bit of um, dirt around there that would simulate, you know, kind of the, um, the crew members working in and around these uh, fuel nozzles. So just go ahead and, uh, and inside this little can here, I have um, a multi multiple colors of um, brown and black that have been shaved using um, this little sanding block here. All right, so now we have that done. So we have our highlights. We have a little bit of our low lights around the panel lines. Uh, now comes time to start adding some of the um, the exhaust staining. And if you remember, if you look at this wing here, you can kind of see that they're not necessarily symmetric. Um, if you do a lot of research, um, then there's a lot of really good books out there to do this with, or you can even do it online. You don't want to look at ones that are used in the air shows. You want to look at um, ones that are actually used in combat. And if you look at some directly overhead shots, you can see that the, um, the airflow actually took a lot of the, um, the oil staining it kind of made it kind of like an hourglass shape. And it usually ends somewhere right around this vent uh, where these vents are. And I think maybe at that, that point it uh, kind of collected there or um, for whatever reason didn't really continue too much further past. And the other thing is that it always seems to be biased a little bit towards the, um, the center of the fuse, you know, cleaning towards the fuselage. So we're gonna do something similar to that uh, with this. So we're gonna start off with our, our, our trusty uh, soft, this is really soft charcoal. And what I want to do is I want to start um, just streaking back the oil. And the majority of it always seem to be coming out of the, uh, the, the very top of the, um, the engine. So we're going to start heavy there. And then we're just going to start uh, a little bit lighter on the sides. And something else to notice is that it usually would want to come up around the wings. So we're going to kind of simulate that a little bit as well. And it's okay to be a little heavy on this too, because we're gonna we're gonna blend it down a little bit using the um, using the uh, cotton balls.
Okay, so after you've had your um, the exhaust standing in, you kind of see I have it uh, kind of blending down into like this hourglass shape. I'm going to work, work that in. I use my hands a little bit. The cotton ball sometimes doesn't get it quite in enough when the oil standing. And what this is, I'm actually going to start layering this a little bit too. Uh, the next step here um, is actually to take uh, kind of a light clear coat. And I just want to mist it over the top and I want to seal it in. And then once that's done, I'm going to go over the entire thing with this uh, satin uh, Minwax polyacrylic. Uh, and this is going to add a protective layer um, and also continually give it a little bit more depth. And then because this is not really all that flat, uh, I'm going to mist everything over with an acrylic flat. Um, once I switch over to acrylics, I'm going to stick with acrylics because I don't want to have anything that's going to soften the paint or soften the foam. So I stick with the acrylics. So the only thing really left to do here is just um, fading of the uh, the elevator, or I mean the aileron, which is going to be done using some light colors. And then this thing can be off to uh, the paint shop to get um, clear coated. And then they usually allow about a 24 hour set period for the clear coat. Um, and then I'll kind of come back through it and I'll, and I'll adjust the uh, levels of the color accordingly. I may add a little more oil staining or add a little bit more uh, paint fading depending on which it looks like. Um, I'll add the polyacrylic over the top. And then I'll finish it by adding some actual oil staining using the um, a really watered down black acrylic paint and do the same thing around the, uh, the filler nozzles. So that pretty much wraps up uh, how to weather the wing on your um, Hobby King 1875mm B17. And then once they uh, are fully done being clear coated, uh, you can go ahead and assemble the wings, paint them, install all the uh, electronics, uh, wire up the motors, and then move to uh, painting and detailing uh, the cowl engine and all around there, but that will wait to another day. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it.